Hey guys, so today I have a special treat for you all. I went back to a really bad relationship. So, as you guys know, I spent a lot of time looking at art snacks, watercolor snacks this year, and then Sketchbox decided to have a watercolor box. And I decided I needed to get back together with Specs, with Sketchbox for a one night stand. So, a little bit of information. Art Snacks is no longer doing their watercolor snacks. So, unfortunately for everyone involved, I cannot resurrect the dead Art Snacks versus Sketchbox. I do have some of those videos, I have a year's worth, in fact, of those videos that you guys can check out when I did it last year. So, if you enjoy seeing me be snarky, if you enjoy seeing me be pedantic, if you like seeing me get real petty, then you should definitely check out those videos. Fair warning, I have no idea, none at all, what's in this box. I did not try to guess what's in this box with my friend Kabocha. This is completely blind to me, but my history with Sketchbox is frequently snarky and often bitter, so I have a feeling this may be a snarky video. That said, I'm completely open to them sending good stuff, and I always let the numbers and the quality really do the talking. I don't care if they send me duplicates because I've always got some friend that I can send a duplicate to. What I care about is those who buy these boxes getting art supplies that they're actually going to enjoy. So let's go ahead and disembowel this very special watercolor sketch box. All right, I paid $99 for this thing. I know there's some gasps in the audience. And the only way I could do that was thanks to the support of my wonderful, fantastic, phenomenal patrons on Patreon. So this video is dedicated to them. There was one piece of tape holding this shut, which isn't a problem. It seemed pretty secure. Let's bend it back and let's take a look. All right. So we get cat food. We get a small Kuratake Gansai set. This is the 12 color set. It's a little ironic because um, the summer watercolor snacks came with a Gansai Tombi set. But you know, there's nothing wrong with it. These are fine watercolors. I was excited to get them then. I'm happy enough to get them now. They also sent, wow, actually, they sent a lot of stuff. They all, I, mean, I guess for 99 bucks, they better. They sent their brand of watercolor brush pins which I like their watercolor brushes and these are filled with different dyes you get dark blue light blue red yellow and black pretty good color range actually that might be purple pretty good color range I'm not disappointed by that um, it's certainly cheaper than them making that these themselves are cheaper than them sending like mermaid markers or cheaper than them sending pencil brush pins those both tend to get pretty pricey Next, we have, I've actually heard really, really good things about this. One of my friends really likes it, and I'd wanted to buy one, and I'm glad I waited. A uh, Pabio High Precision Masking Fluid Marker. So this is masking fluid in a pen. And I don't know if I recorded my Molotov graphics review, but I hated that thing. So I'm hoping I'll like this. They sent one of the waterproof, Kur I think this is one of the waterproof Kuratake brush pens. So this is a Fude pen. They sent Viva color sheets, and what's funny is that my friend Kabocha sent me these, sent me some as well. So um, I will probably gift. Well, I'm gonna open these to test them, so I don't know who would want them. Maybe I'll send them to my friend Heidi. They sent their own sketchbook, and it comes with ultra thick paper. Um, this could be nice. It's cute. They sent Windsor Newton gouache and Talon's gouache, so two different brands of gouache, an empty water brush, a Stegler pencil, and then the card of cards. So normally what I would do is normally I would break this video up into three parts, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one video. So we're going to go ahead and read our little, this isn't a menu because this isn't art snacks. We're going to read our little product card. Vivia Color Sheet 16 Colors. So this is a new product according to this. And I'm going to send photos to my friend Kabocha and see if it compares to the wrapping with the one they'd ordered. 
Vivia color sheets are a newly launched product that's revolutionizing the way people approach watercolor. They're perfect for plain air work or traveling since you can close up the book and put it right in your pocket without mess. Well, if that's true, <laughs> each sheet is made from heavily saturated ultra premium dyes that are surprisingly vibrant. Archer and Olive Custom Sketchbook. Oh, I didn't, sorry, $16 for the, is what they say the Vivia color sheets are. Archer and Olive Custom Sketchbook, retail price, $28. And I have to admit here, I am not a fancy sketchbook user at all. Like, I buy cheap but good sketchbooks because if it's nice, I won't use it. So, so I'm going to force my, I had to force myself to use the Inktober Denik sketchbook and I don't even like it for inking to be frank so I'm gonna use make sure I actually use this thing since I paid for it we pay we partnered with Archer and Olive to create this custom exclusive sketchbook only available in this box it has 112 pages of 160 GSM ultra thick paper that is perfect for gouache and watercolor we like this item so much we created a new custom box size yeah this is a different box size that is true to accommodate it with its high quality linen cover and elastic strap it's perfect to accompany your new wa your new watercolors on the go and that's $28 sketchbox signature color brushes all six colors retail price seven dollars each <sighs> y'all that is that is some that's generous cuz like they know they know people like me who are gonna compare it to other products they know that uh, we're in a bind so um, all right, we'll go with that. We'll go with that for now. I have certainly not purchased Recollections brush pins and then filled them with various dyes. No. Or fountain pen inks. No, certainly have not. These are our own exclusive item. Each brush comes pre-filled with incredibly vibrant water-based water ink. The brushes have a medium round nylon brush head and depending on the saturation can show dry brush marks or dripping wet layers of color. Since the ink is water based, they can be blended with the included Pentel Aquash water brush. I wonder how these are going to compare to Pentel and to Mermaid markers. Hmm. Kuretake Gensai Tombi watercolors, 12 color set. Retail price $16.67. These watercolor pans are made from traditional Japanese water based pigments that are extremely vibrant. The professional grade, highly pigmented paints blend easily and ensure a lovely consistency of color. Pabio Drawing Gum Marker, 0.7 millimeters. That's the thing I'm excited about. Retail price, $7.95. Use this to mask off areas you don't want your gouache or watercolor to touch with a price, precise 0.7 millimeter tip. It's great for line work like the artwork on the cover of the box. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Pentel Aquash Mini Water Brush, medium, retail price $4.99. All right, all right, y'all, all right. Like, honestly, I see these go for more, so this is not about that. This is about, it would be cheaper for us to buy a bunch of these and some dyes and make our own dye-based brush pins, but, you know. The durable nylon bristles of this self-wetting brush hold a point and can create broad strokes to fine lines. The soft, easy to squeeze barrel is comfortable to hold and it contains the water needed to create a beautiful watercolor painting. Use it to blend the water-based ink from your Sketchbox sig signature color brushes, lift dye from the Viv Vivia color sheets, or with the Kuretake Gansai Tombi set. Windsor & Newton Designer's Gouache, Naples Yellow. So a lot, that is a very popular color for skin tones. The choice of designers and illustrators alike. Outstanding brilliance, exceptionally smooth flow, great opacity, and covering power make Designer's Gouache a pleasure to work with. Retail price, $10.79. Royal Talons Gouache, Scarlet. Retail price, $10.45. Outstanding for consistency and brushability, opacity, and a velvety matte finish. These gouache colors are ideal for artists, designers, and illustrators. The colors are notably thixotropic. They reduce from a paste-like consistency to a fluid with just a few mixes with a brush. The colors brush out smoothly, and their high pigmentation results in powerful colors. All colors dry to a uniform matte surface within a few minutes. Kuretake Zig Hickey, or Hickey, Fude Pin, sorry, Zig Hickey. Uh, retail price, $2.75. This is a great pin for outlining your completed watercolor piece or adding detail. Okay, so they want us to use that after, so it's not necessarily waterproof, which means we got to test it. 
It has a relatively stiff, fine brush tip that allows for variability in your stroke width with a simple change in pressure. It's also great for calligraphy and hand lettering. Stadler Mars Lumograph Black Drawing Pencils 8... Yeah, 8B. Wow, that's for, like, graphite transfer there. Retail price, $215. Mars Lumograph Black Drawing Pencils feature a high proportion of carbon for matte jet black results. They are perfect for dramatic sketches with intense, rich blacks. They combine the advantages of graphite and charcoal pencils, but should not be mistaken for a charcoal pencil as the lead contains unburned carbon rather than charcoal. Featuring brake-resistant leads made through special lead formulation, the pencils are housed in wood from certified, sustainably managed forests. Alright, so the very next step we need to do is we need to talk turkey and crunch some numbers. Alright, so I return with some numbers for you guys. So I'm going to read everything through and then we're going to talk what I paid, what Sketchbox recommends we pay, the MSRP, and my total price. So for the Vivia color sheets and... They are a small, compact little booklet like this that came in a cute packaging. And these were made in India. You can only get these, if you didn't back their Indiegogo, which ended a while back, you can get this particular set for $16 on the Vivia site. And you can find everything linked in the description below. So next is the Archer and Olive Custom Sketchbook. And they suggest 28 for this. There's nothing like this listed on the site. They carry planners and bullet journals. So there's no blank paper books listed on their site. Well, obviously this is a custom job. So truly it is custom and not just the screening on the front, which I'm kind of impressed with. The closest I could find is 30 to $35 on their site. Similar sketchbooks, similar watercolor notebooks would be the Moleskine Watercolor Sketchbook, which is $18.44 on Amazon, the Pentallic Watercolor Sketchbook, which is $13.99 on Dick Blick, or the Strathmore 400 Series Watercolor Journal, which is $12.65 on Amazon. Next are the Sketchbox Signature Color Brushes, and these are also a custom item. They have used dye-based inks in their own water brushes. The closest compare, oh, they want seven each for these, so that's six of them, so that's $42. I feel a little uncomfortable with the fact that almost half the box's price comes from a custom item. I feel like that's a little bit cheating because they're getting these manufactured in China. They're not paying MSRP. They're not buying these from another company, but whatever. The closest comparison, since you can't buy these anywhere else, are Pentel brush pins, which go from $5.15 to $8.40 on Amazon, or the Mermaid markers, which are $27.15 on Amazon, and you get 12. And they are a lot like this. I'm going to show that in a future video, that they are pretty much the same markers. Next is the Kuratake Gensai watercolors. This is the 12 color set. And they suggested $16.67. You can get it for $13 on Amazon. The Pabio Drawing Gum Marker in 0.7 millimeters. They suggested $7.95. You can get it for $10.70 on Amazon or $5.50 on Blick. The Aquash Mini Watercolor Brush. You can get it. They suggested $4.99. You can get it for $3.99 on Dick Blick or $4.96 on Amazon. The Winsor & Newton Designers Gouache in Naples Yellow. And the color does matter for Winsor & Newton because some colors are more expensive. Um, they suggest $10.79, but you can get it for $6.47 on Blick. The Royal Talons uh, Gouache in Scarlet, they suggested $10.45. You can get it for $8.99 on Blick. The Kuratake Zig Hike Fude Pin. Um, you can get these from a lot of different places. They suggest $2.75. I found it for $3.15 on Amazon. That is a little bit high. And then finally, the Stadler Mars Lumograph Black Drawing Pencil in 8B. They recommend $2.15. I found it for $1.79 on Blick. So I paid $99 for this box. But is this box worth $99? So the MSRP total is $141.75 and my total is $122.51. So it's still well above what I've paid. Next, we're going to unwrap all of this 
and start swatching, playing around with it, figuring it out. Program that makes you guys think, wow, I really need to join the art nerd community. I really need to head on over to patreon.com slash natosoup and support Becca Hilburn in her unboxings and her reviews. This is the demonstration portion of our program. This is where viewers become art nerds. So we're going to work our way through this entire box. So I hope you guys have popcorn. I hope you guys are buckled in. I hope you are ready for the long haul. Maybe consider this your art supply ASMR. I don't know. Whatever, it, whatever does it for you is fine by me. We are going to go through these supplies one by one and try them out. So the first thing I want to share with you guys is, first of all, this is a pretty hefty collection. And you should also note that this box is called their water media box. It's not their watercolor box. So we received gouache, which is a water media. We received a lot of dye based stuff, which are water media. And it's interesting because I don't see dye based stuff get a lot of attention. So I'm kind of happy to see some dye based stuff in this box. It's unusual. And that's always been a big complaint that I've had with Sketchbox is that they didn't think outside the box enough. Okay, all right, I see you, Sketchbox. They also included some masking fluid. They included something to draw with, or you can do graphite transfers with this because it is really soft and really dark. They included something to ink with. They, I'm not really sure why they included this when they have their Sketchbox signature water brushes, which are actually really nice, but they did. We've got 12 Gansai Tombi colors, and it's not a bad color range at all. It's a decent, it's, I mean, it's your normal mixing color set. And then they included this, which is beautiful. It's got a linen cover. It's got gilt. It's got a ribbon. It's eggshell blue, one of my favorite colors. It's got a nice elastic. But like so many beautiful things that have gilt on the cover, the pages are not that exciting. These are not watercolor pages. This is not watercolor paper. This is okay paper. I would ink on this paper. I would try this paper out with fountain pens, but I wouldn't necessarily watercolor on it. But I'm gonna watercolor on it for you guys today because I'm a woman of my word and I am. these products were sent to us obviously with the intention that we use them together and that's what I'm gonna do. Next, I wanna take a look at this Pabio masking fluid. It comes with a spare nib, which I really like. That might even be a smaller nib. Nah, just a spare. And it feels like it's a plastic nib. Oh, that's cool. It's actually, and you guys are not going to be able to see this probably, it's a hollow core nib. That is super duper cool. The graphics one, which died on me, had a foam, not a foam, like a compressed felt nib. I threw it away, otherwise I would show it to you guys and it dried out in the compressed fiber after I'd used it once. This, not only is this less likely to dry out, but if it does, I can replace it. It's got an old shaka shaka in it, so it is shake to activate. So that's pretty cool, I'm looking forward to that. I think this might actually perform really well and I'm excited. Plus, I've had friends recommend this, so it comes from a good place. Now, <laughs> the Viviva sheets are going to be interesting. First of all, this is intended to be slipped into a pocket, and there's just something about pocket sets which always seem to get my money in the end. So I'm already open, very open to the idea of a pocket set. It's got like a hanging loop, and it's handmade in India, handmade with love in India, 16 colors. You can even put your name on it. It's very cute. Instructions. The color sheets look different than their actual color on paper as the pigment is super saturated. Are these pigment or are these dye based? The, the partition between colors are covered with a special water repellent coating to avoid sticking with wet colors. Okay, so you really can or you really are supposed to be able to just shut the book and go. Because that was my concern. Like peerless, you can't just shut the book and go. We recommend that you let the colors dry before closing the color sheets. Of course. VV... VV... Viviva? V Come on, y'all. Help me out. Viviva. I'm going to call it like six different names the whole time. Viviva. 
Color sheets are safe for use, but needless to say, do not ingest them. What? I can't eat it? It's not delicious? Please wash your hands with soap after use and have fun. And we have 16 colors. They are on smaller pads. It seems like there's a piece of vellum in between. The colors are shown at the bottom of the box bottom of the little booklet one shot so you could just flip to the page you want but my question is if I'm working ooh, look at that violet it's got like air interference gold going on that's pretty the Prussian blue is really Persian blue is really nice too because look it basically looks red and then they include ooh, what is all this about so you can order new color sheets they have another piece of the protection. And what are you supposed? What is all this supposed to be? Stick mixing panel here. It's a oh, it's a coated mixing panel. Huh. Okay. All right. I don't know why they didn't go with like a polypropylene paper for that, but sure. Okay. And then this page was intentionally left blank. And then welcome. You are one of the earliest members of the Viv Vivi Viva. <laughs> community share your artwork with the rest of the community use viva viva color sheets and <laughs> come on y'all viva viva colors i'm sorry i'm having a lot of trouble saying this correctly now a friend of mine um ordered these i think from the indiegogo and um was not impressed and sent them to me not these but sent me a set and i have squirreled them away somewhere like a bad friend and i need to do a peerless and viva viva Viviva comparison because I promised and I'm try to be a woman of my word so you guys get to look forward to that and maybe I'll pass the one that was sent off to someone else honestly I should be using the one that was sent off sent to me because it's already been used and this one hasn't been used so it could just be regifted to somebody oh well all right next ill illy we have these and this is not the video where I compare them to the Pintel brush pins and to the mermaid markers but we're gonna go ahead and get these started and these are gonna take a little while so I'm gonna do one for you guys and then I'm gonna time-lapse the rest and then you squeeze them a little bit to get the ink to start to flow you don't want to squeeze too much because it'll, it'll just get all up in that cap and I think that happened to me plenty when I used the uh, when I did the mermaid markers and then we're gonna store them brush side down to encourage the ink to flow I'm gonna give y'all a little spoiler on the comparison video these are going to be exactly like are pretty dang close unless the colors are drastically different they're gonna be pretty dang close to the mermaid markers they even have that little breather tube that the mermaid markers have in them and the mermaid markers already use this style of body so unless the pigment is just, I mean, the ink is just terrible, it's going to be about the same. Going to take this over to the sink to fill it up. All right, let's start testing out in this Sketchbox exclusive. So I'm going to start with all of these things here while our brush pins kind of have a chance to absorb. So... We're going to start, let's start with the Viviva color sheets. This is going to get in the way. It's interesting though that they thought about this in a form factor for travel. Oh, you can also make your swatch. Oh, okay. Well then I will do that. I will, I will do that. And I'm going to go grab a paper towel because I'm going to need one. You guys can probably already see this paper is not taking the watercolor super duper well because it's not watercolor paper. Deep pink does not seem too different doesn't seem different at all from crimson really and now I have to like allow it to dry but also continue to swatch mm. 
So we're looking at vermilion there. There's a little bit of particulate in there that I don't know what that is. Dusk orange. So like with any of these sort of blind box art supply boxes, I'm kind of curious. Like, okay, their theme is water media, but it doesn't necessarily theme like seem theme seem that theme to seem theme theme it doesn't really seem theme like a coherent theme scene okay so this is supposed to prevent it from sticking when it's something sticking when it's wet so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna progress we're gonna see because like if you're gonna use this in the field you you don't have time necessarily just to let it dry I'm not like super hot on the peerless. They're okay, but like I have trouble using them because they're a dye based medium that then requires you to use water just to activate them. But dye based is often highly water reactive. So, like, I can't really do layers, but maybe I just paint. Oh, I kind of like that color. The colors seem different from my Viviva color sheets. Or, I'm sorry, my. Peerless watercolors getting all confuzzled. Yeah, I think this is paper, and I think when I scrub it to pick up color, it starts to pill. So that is one way that I like the Peerless watercolors. A bit. Whoa, that Viridia, that's cool. So it, I didn't, I forgot we were doing greens because it looked red, and that's like a really interference red color on there like even my cell phone camera which is what I'm using to record is picking it up and why you might ask Becca my dearest why are you using a cell phone camera when you have a lovely camcorder that you could be using because my darlings I want to get this video out to you guys ASAP some might even say Akasak I want to get this video out to you guys Akasak more beautiful interference colors and that just means when it sheens a different color than what it actually is which I kind of like because it's magenta okay I'm just really like I kind of see what they're doing, but I kind of can't. Like, part of me, oh, we're going to have just enough room. Part of me is like, okay, this could be a fun travel set. Ooh, that black is kind of interesting. Because, like, we've got the mini brush, and we've got, like, the smaller Gansai set. Uh, okay, I'm just going to shut it and just kind of, like, let it dry like this. And we'll, we'll, we'll be good. We'll be fine. And we've got like this mini water brush that now needs to be refilled after I swatched like 12, 16 colors because it's a dollar a color. Some of these colors are really pretty though and I think they're significant. I'm going to have to double check but I think they're fairly different from the Peerless. But like those two browns are orange. They're not even brown. They're just orange. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry and then we're going we're gonna to move on. We're going to move on with our lives. So this page is still wet but we're going to turn it over it's passably dry it's not going to necessarily migrate onto the next page it seems to stay down pretty well we could use a clip to clip it in place we're going to move on now to the kurotake gansai tombi you guys know i like these watercolors i have the 36 set which was given to me as a gift by my friend heidi black i have the 24 set which i got in the no, watercolor snacks. There we go. The watercolor snacks um, summer box. And now we have a little cute 12 color set. So I'm going to go ahead and do all my color mapping. I will do that in time lapse for you guys. And then we'll swatch and talk on this particular paper. And what I say about these watercolors is mostly going to be related to this book. It's not a watercolor book.
right, so I want you guys to notice how the paper has curled because it is not watercolor paper and I also did not secure it down. What I do like though is the way these are stitched, I mean, at least for right now, the way these are stitched, it can lay moderately flat. It isn't trying to always close on me, so that's a plus. All right, we're gonna test out our Fude pen. And I know they said to use it after. And I really like Kuratake's Fude pens. They tend to make really nice Fude pens, but they don't tend to make waterproof ones. For that, I like to use Sakura's Pigma. Um, let's see if I've got one handy. This is a Pigma MB, so this is waterproof and Copic proof, so you can ink before you apply your watercolor if you wish. And um, Sailor makes the Sailor Mitsuo Ida and the Sailor Rio Fuka, and both of those are also waterproof. We're gonna test this. Now normally, I would let it dry overnight. So I'm gonna give it about 10 minutes. I think that's long enough to cure. And we're gonna start by swatching our gouache. And we have two. Now gouache is an opaque watercolor that you mix thickly, so you want kind of the consistency of cream. And I'm just gonna apply a dot right there and I should just go ahead and warn you guys I am not going to I'm probably not going to do a field test with this that's a little thicker than cream but it'll do so Naples yellow is a fairly popular choice for painting easy uh, Caucasian or Asian skin tones And then we're going to try the Talons gouache. And I'm not going to do a field test with this unless you guys just beg me, beg me to do a field test because I'm doing Inktober. So I'm already doing an illustration every single day. However, if you guys want to challenge me to use all of these pieces, all of these products together, I might be up for a challenge. So that is our gouache. And now we have six beautiful brush pins to go ahead and swatch. And they are not labeled, they don't have color names or anything like that. right now it's a little bit dry so I'm like squeezing it as I apply it instead of giving it a squeeze and then releasing this is not really the best paper to try blending it out there's a harsh line already and I can't tell if it's the dyes they're using or if it's the paper so I'm gonna have to try it on another paper Yeah, these are a little bit dry. Um, the mermaid markers tend to get really fluid and like really, really, really want to leak all over and difficult to control as your hand warms up the dye. And these are new and I didn't wash out the sizing either since they didn't provide any instructions to do so. Sometimes I'll do that even if it doesn't tell me to do so. Sometimes I will not. All right, they included a black, which is just kind of like, I don't know, I wish they'd included just a color, like indigo or something. Also, like, is it supposed to be indigo and it's just super dark? Because, like, the cap is dark blue, but that looks like black to me. Anyway, I feel like I don't need more black brush pins in my life. I think including, like, a brown or a pink... Yeah, I think it's the sizing in the brushes that is the big contributor to this problem. Okay, come on. There we go. So you can make your life a little bit easier by washing that out ahead of time, and that goes for almost any dye-based brush pen with that kind of a tip. I'm not, I'm not impressed with these. I'm going to try them on another paper. I'm going to try cleaning the sizing out of them, but like... The colors are kind of Crayola box basic. 
you know, and um, they're a little, it's hard to get the ink to kind of advance, and they really don't like this paper, and the colors are not great. Like, this is not the best red, like, I really like Pintel Brush Pins Red. It's a really good red, and it's a little bit of an orange red, and the Mermaid Markers Reds are nice also. These don't want to blend on this paper either, so. All right, so I'm gonna let these dry, then I'm going to do a water fastness test with the Kuratake Fude Pen. All right, so this took a little while to dry. There's even still some wet spots, but it does look like both of them do dry matte. Let's go ahead and try Okay, all right. So we are getting some smearing, but it's not like a streak of pigment or a streak of dye. I wonder if on a watercolor paper allowed to dry a proper amount of time, this might actually be waterproof. So last, we well, we have two lasts. We have the Pabio masking gum and we have the Stadler Mars Lumograph Black. It really does feel like charcoal. It's soft, it's fairly buttery, doesn't necessarily get all over my hands the way charcoal does. Let's try to erase it. So this is what's left of a white stroke eraser, my current favorite. All right, so you can lift a little bit, but it's really not going anywhere. Once you put those marks down, you're probably stuck with them. Let's give it a, a shot with the uh, Sakura uh, electric eraser. Not really any better. So once you put this down, it's not going anywhere. And then, lastly, we need to do something with this drawing gum, right? So it says to shake it, to depress it, draw your line, and then cap it again. It's got a shaker ball inside. You can hear that. Alright, I'm going to give that a chance to dry, and that shouldn't take super long, and then I'm going to do, hmm, I guess I'll just use a bunch of the Gansai Tambi watercolors on top of it.
All right, friends, I can tell this is gonna take forever to dry. This is just not the right paper for it. So, I'm gonna cheat a little bit because we don't have 10 million years and I wanna test this out on watercolor paper anyway. I've got Fluid 100 right here. It is a cotton rag watercolor paper. I really like it. Seems to go on smooth enough. There's a little bit of drag. Not terribly bad it's not really sticky to the hand oh yes right there it was it's not really tearing up my paper which is good because I really like using cotton rag papers and I really like the concept behind this pen. So I'd be really disappointed if it was destructive. And I promise if this pin works out, I will do some videos with it. We'll do some stuff together with it. Because I can see myself using something like this all the time. I have friends who complain about wanting to mask off like really fine wispy hairs. This could be something for that. I mean, I've been told to use a ruling pen with masking fluid, and I know people do that, but I don't have a ruling pen, so I haven't tried it myself. All right, you guys can see the design on there. I'm gonna give it a little bitty bit of time to dry. And then I'm kind of tempted to use the dye base pens, but I still don't really like them. So what I may do is clean those out and then revisit them in another video. So I guess we'll use the Viviva color sheets on this. So again, I've cleaned and refilled my water brush. That seems to be all I've done tonight. What count am I on now? I've lost count. Surely one of you guys have it. Almost wish I used... Um, gum arabic to mask it and then I could do a really cool radiated effect but I did not so let's pick let's pick two nice colors let's pick I guess viridian green we'll do our shoujo sparkles in viridian green and we're really just testing to see if this masks. Grab some peacock blue. And if this masks well, this could be a nice thing for brush letterers. Persian blue and peacock blue don't really have much difference in color. In this set, I mean. Also, it seems like you would just really run through these kind of quick. Okay, violet. magenta I'm not a hundred percent sure where I lost y'all so I sprinkled some salt on this after I finished applying the color 
And I also noticed that you're not going to be able to get all of the paint off of these the way you would with the Peerless because these are applied to paper, not acetate, and the paper absorbs some of the color. So you're never really going to be able to get all of your paint up off of the Viviva color sheets. So really think acetate or plastic polyurethane would have been a good move for that. Okay, so uh, it's still a little damp, but I want to go ahead and remove the masking fluid and we're going to come back now to, this is still wet. So like early, I keep pointing out this isn't watercolor paper and my concern is like, yes, you can kind of do light watercolor washes, but you guys see how muted these colors are too. Yeah, you can do light watercolor washes on it, but it's going to take forever to dry. You can't really use that for field sketches. It's just not going to not going to work super as well. All right. So, this dye seems fairly res uh reactive to salt. So, that's nice. You can use it for nice brightly colored effects. That's one of the plus sides of using dyes is you get these really really bright colors. One of the downsides to dye is they are not light fast. And my friend who sent me the Viviva color sheets warned me that these things are super not light fast. They comparison tested them against Peerless and Peerless fared a lot better. But the colors are really pretty. The red is still wet, but I'm gonna remove it anyway, especially here where we got some reactivity a lot of reactivity with the salt. But I also have with me a masking fluid pickup that was not included. You could use your finger. Alright, so the Pabio drawing gum removes pretty cleanly from the included sketch box art book sketchbook I'm not really sure what to call this because it's not a watercolor sketchbook I guess it would just be like a pen and ink sketchbook maybe have to try that a little bit later the sad thing is is they don't they don't sell this type of book I mean maybe if these were like people really loved them and there was a lot of demand they might start selling sketchbooks but I know a lot of artists feel the same way I do about fancy sketchbooks and just prefer plain functional sketchbooks because that way if you make something ugly it doesn't matter all right so the paper is still kind of wet down here but you guys can see it removed really cleanly we're going to do the same now on our cotton rag paper and be careful because sometimes you get smearing and then the result isn't as nice and striking. A little harder on this paper I may not have put down as much. Did have some areas where there's a little bit of skipping such as on the arm of that sparkle there, so that's something you're going to want to be aware of. This was a pretty interesting sketch box. I think it was worth the value that I paid, but it felt very disparate. Like all the parts didn't really gel into like a coherent whole for me. I couldn't really see where they were going with this box. And I think with these theme boxes, you should see where they're going. You should see what they're suggesting you make or suggesting you use it for like I feel like all the parts should make sense together and I'm always really disappointed when these boxes just include 
a bunch of materials that don't really mesh together because I'm not necessarily looking to put together a studio. On the other hand though, the only thing in this box, well there's the only things in this box that I had already owned were the Viviva color sheets and that is because a friend sent me those, the Gansai Tombi watercolor and the Kuratake Fude pen. And the only ones that I had formally tried were the Gansai Tombi, so that's pretty cool. It's always nice to have this old dog learn a couple new tricks, especially when it comes to things she hasn't yet reviewed. I think it was definitely worth the money, but I like with art snacks, I'm not really sure who this box is for. I get that it's for watercolor artists, but is it for watercolor artists who are traveling like this suggests not that this is necessarily ideal for travel watercolor but it's at least an interesting innovation towards that is it for artists who I don't know paint large with these larger pans in mixing set colors is it for artists who do a lot of illustration and might not, might need to do fine line masking is it for artists who don't need archival art materials and therefore dye-based art materials are fine? Um, they're going to scan it or they're going to protect it and it's never going to fade. Who is this box for is my big question. I want to thank you guys so much for watching my Sketchbox Water Media Unbox and Swatch. I hope you guys really enjoyed it, and I hope you guys will consider joining my art nerd community over on Patreon. That is how I can afford to do these sort of interesting unbox and swatches. If you enjoy watercolor, I highly recommend you check out my Art Snacks Water what is it watercolor snacks series I did two of their boxes so I did unboxings I did demonstrations and I did field tests so if you like blind box watercolor goodies you should definitely check those out and if you're interested in seeing how art snacks and sketchbox compare I have an entire year's worth of comparative reviews here on this channel from last year that I recommend you check out if you enjoy watercolor consider subscribing I do a lot of watercolor stuff on this channel and head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basic series and if you like my art not that you could tell from this video but in general if you like my art make sure you check out my beautiful watercolor webcomic 7inch Kara. You can read that at 7inchkara.com and 7inchkara.tumblr.com. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you guys again really soon and I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. Bye guys!